In this video, we're going to talk about your minimum trailer design to support your tact and last planner systems. This is important because your systems won't work if we can't communicate them and get them all the way to the workers in the field. And so you must have the right visual environment to showcase that, to enable collaboration, and to make commitments. And so I'm going to show you exactly how you can design your trailer to support these systems. Okay, so number one, we're going to want to have our master schedule. Number two, our pull plan, that when we do, we'll always come around and educate that master schedule and will be updated in that tact those tact sequences because your master schedule will always be a tact plan and then summarized in a CPM schedule if you need it. Then your look ahead plan. Your look ahead will make sure that you're making work ready and allow you to remove roadblocks. Then your weekly work plan and your day plan. So right here I've listed FP. Your first planners are involved with the master schedule. From here on down, this is your last planner involvement. And again, once you create those pull plans, that educates those sequences in your master schedule. And this one, two, three, four, five gets the information all the way to the workers. So these are the schedule deliverables. Number one, a master schedule is for your milestones and your overall duration. Number two, your pull plan is for your sequence and to get a collaborative plan. Number three, your look ahead is to make work ready and remove roadblocks. Number four, your weekly work plan is for your trades to collaborate and commit. And your day plan is to communicate to everyone on the project site what the plan for the day is. So the question is, how are you going to get this information all the way to the workers? Well, the answer is you must have a remarkable conference room trailer and a minimum design. So let's go ahead and look at these. When you look at your trailer, um, I don't really care if it's a single wide, a triple wide, or a, a quad, whatever it is, I'm looking for the best conference room design that you possibly can get. So if it's a single wide, you can't do this. But if you have a double wide or a triple wide, I want a nice size conference room. And usually what I'll do is put the room in a horseshoe. Uh, this isn't scientifically proven. This is just my personal preference. But what I want as a couple of minimums, and I'll tie it back to the formats, is I want two uh, screens up here on the front part of that conference room. I'll tell you why too. Number one, I want to be able to pull up my tact plan on one screen right here. On the second one, I want to be able to pull up my maps, my model, uh, my logistics. I want to be able to put up, pull up anything on this second screen. If I'm back here leading the meeting, I can show people the schedule and the visualization of the space to the left. Remember, scheduling is always about the visualization of time and space. Remember, even on tact planning, it's time and space. Remember, in the four dimensions that we see all around us, it's X, Y, Z, T. It's time and space. So I want to see all four dimensions here of time and space. Um, and space is the X, Y, Z, and uh, time is T. So those are four dimensions. So once I have that, I can always see my master schedule. And if I can uh, pull up the master schedule, the tact plan, whether it's norm or macro level, I can also pull up my uh, risk and opportunity register. I can pull up my procurement log. I can pull up anything that governs that master schedule with my vi visuals up here on the front. The other thing that I really, really like is to make sure that I have a whiteboard. And this can be any color, but most whiteboards are white. Uh, so this whiteboard, um, so that I can draw and sketch as I'm communicating. Now, typically, because I do want to do these pull plans in a collaborative way, I, on the west side of the, well, not west side, but maybe on the left side as I'm facing the screens, I will want to have either um, pull planning boards, look ahead boards, or at least a blank space for my pull plans. 
uh, this seems to be a really nice place to do it uh, because what I can do is I can ask people to uh, come up and put up their collaborative sequence. I can use the whiteboard and as we're doing it, I can see some key visuals on the other side of the conference room. So that takes care of my pull plan. Um, my look ahead and the roadblock tracking maps um, can be brought up on my screens, but there's an additional component that I want to bring everyone's mind to. So over here on this side, I highly recommend that you have your zone control maps and your logistics plan. So let's go ahead and do a cut section through this right here and take a look at this and this detail will come around. Let's say that I'm looking at this in elevation view. Maybe I have six zones, right? So I'll have a zone map, a zone map, and I'll have all six of them up here listed, looking pretty, and then this is my logistics plan. Each one of these will be covered with plexiglass. So I can just cover the whole thing with plexiglass so I can write on it like I am now. But either way, I'll see um, this uh, first area, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and then I'll see my logistics maps over here on the side. What this does is it allows us to implement more fully zone control and to see the zones and to see where the roadblocks are out in the field. And I can talk more about roadblocks and handoffs, which is the how of absolutely how we uh, implement in the field. I, I already know when most of this stuff needs to happen. I want to know how we're going to hand it off and get it done. So. Uh, now that I have those maps, I can always track my look-aheads, I can always see where I'm going, I can always see my roadblocks, and I still can pull up that look-ahead format up in the actual screen on my large screen TVs. Same goes with the weekly work plan, and same goes with the day plan. Now, the only thing that I would add here is on the back of the wall, you may consider putting up some guides. Maybe the meeting agendas, maybe your culture, maybe your team charter. But at a minimum, I want these screens, I want the whiteboard, I want the pull plan area, and I want your zone maps where you can track roadblocks and you can focus on zone control. So this is the minimum of what I expect in the trailer. The other thing is I do want people to be happy to be in there. I'm looking for snacks. I'm looking for, uh, you know, just a good decoration, better paint on the wall. I don't like that puke brown color like we want a really nice conference room and we also want some Christmas and uh, some Halloween decorations and some 4th of July decorations like make that place fun that's where you're going to spend most of your time with the team that you're going to build and the people that are going to execute on the project so this is the minimum of what I'm asking for in your conference room trailer so that you can get these deliverables out to your trade partners and all the way to the workers who are going to put this in place boots on the ground I hope this has been helpful on we go